In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Um, the church, sadly, is uh, shut again because of COVID restrictions, but it's a joy to welcome you all through uh, the wonders of Facebook. So, um, good morning to everybody who's watching this. Today, we're going to be thinking about the nature of being called by God, a sense of vocation and um, playing our part in God's mission in the world as the body of Christ. So they're the things we're going to be thinking about on this second Sunday of Epiphany. And as we prepare to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. As we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us listen to this morning's readings. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, 
Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expletted by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth were able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly, because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and a golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God's saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God and they will reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord.
Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please take a seat. I don't know if it, you have had a, an experience of being called by God. Um, I remember my first experience, I feel that I really sensed God calling me. I was a young boy and I, we, I used to go to church, I think, every now and then um, as a young boy. And I remember going to church once in Watford, in Hertfordshire, and my dad had to take me out because I... I was laughing too much and I thought the whole thing was a bit silly and um, I had to be taken out of church by my dad. But I remember pretty soon after that, I guess, I was in Ireland and I remember looking at the Sacred Heart of Jesus, a picture. And I believe God spoke to me through looking through this picture because it, as a child, I'm sure he winked at me. <laughs> the picture of Jesus winking at me. And whatever happened that day, perhaps I was just caught up in my childish imagination. I felt God was speaking to me. I felt Jesus was giving me a sense of vocation to be a priest. And it wasn't until about 30 years later, or maybe even longer than that, that that actually happened. But um, that was a sense I felt very strongly that that day, as a seven or eight year old in Ireland, in my nana's front room, what, looking at this picture of Jesus, I felt he was speaking to me. I don't know whether you've had an experience like that, or you've had an experience of um, being called in more mundane ways, perhaps through another Christian, through um, a talk you've heard on the radio, or even perhaps from reading a book. Perhaps from reading the Bible, something leapt out and you felt being called by God. Today we hear about um, two people being called by God, or well, three people actually, we, we hear being called by God in the scriptures. First of all, we have Samuel. Samuel was, in, he was a boy in, in uh, the temple at Shiloh. Uh, not the temple in Jerusalem, this is before that, 
but in Samaria, which is kind of the northern part of Israel, um, before the temple was built in the south. And he's lying there. Remember, his mum, Hannah, had given him uh, to the temple in gratitude because she gave birth to him and she, she couldn't have children. Anyway, Samuel is there and he hears a voice and it's God's voice. And he says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And Eli, the priest there, he doesn't really get it. He, doesn't, he can't really hear God's voice. But it's Samuel who can. It's quite interesting. Eli, of course, wasn't the best of priests. Um, he was a bit, uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't that good because his sons were quite corrupt. Uh, if you read the story in 1, King, in, uh, 1 Samuel. Anyway, it's the boy Samuel who hears the voice of God. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, he says. He hears God's voice. And Samuel is used to work for God's purposes in the world. Then we move to the New Testament. And uh, we hear of Philip. Philip is called by Christ. And he goes out and he finds somebody else. And he says to some, this person, Nathaniel, come with me. It's, if there's this person, Jesus, you need, to, you need to see him. And then Nathaniel, quite funnily, has a bit of a... Um, he's not particularly impressed by this guy from Nazareth. Um, he seems to have a bit of a... He seems to be a bit sarcastic. Can anything good come out of Nazareth, he says? Imagine that. You know, imagine... Um, you know, think about Enfield. Can anything good come out of Enfield? It's kind of that thing, you know? He's a bit sarcastic. And then Jesus sees Nathaniel and says, there's no deceit. Here's a true Israelite. There's no deceit on his lips. And I think Jesus is having a bit of a joke. He's saying, this guy speaks his mind. He's not scared to speak his mind. Um, and Nathaniel becomes a follower of Christ. And um, so Philip and Nathaniel are called by Christ. Samuel is called by uh, God. And all these people have a massive impact on the kingdom of God. They're called by God and they do wonderful things. Now, I don't know if you've sensed God calling you, but there's two things I suggest you can, that you can do which might help you listen to the voice of God. And number one is to pray. If you get into the habit of praying, and I know many of you are in that habit anyway, but if you're in the habit of praying to God and speaking to him, he will speak to you if you listen. Maybe have a time of silence, a time of just being still. I believe Pope Francis even goes to sleep. That's what I heard when he prays sometimes. So even the most holy people, um, you know, they sometimes go to sleep when they pray, so don't worry about that. But sense, try and sense that you're with God and you're still with God, and he might speak to you. And the second thing is to read the Bible, getting the habit of reading the Bible, the Scriptures, because God speaks to you through the Scriptures. So those two things, praying and reading the Bible on a regular basis, will really help you discern the voice of God in the chaos and the mess and the joys and tribulations of life. Because God has a plan for you. I have a plan for you, says the Lord. Not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a hope in the future, as he says in Jeremiah. God has a plan for each one of us. Not for our own glory, but for his glory. To help build the kingdom. St. Teresa of Avila said she was a mystic from uh, the 16th century. And she said that 
Christ hasn't got um, a body on earth. We are his body. He, his body exists through us, the church. So we're his ears and his eyes and his feet. What are you called to be? Are you called to be Christ's eyes? Are you to look out for those people who need help? Is God calling you to do that? Particularly in these trying times we're living through at the minute, is God calling you to seek out, use your eyes to seek out people who might need a helping hand, who might need to be uh, prayed for, who might need more practical help? Is God calling you to be his ears, to listen to people, to listen to people's uh, struggles so we can offer our spiritual support and help, to offer company, a listening ear? Is God calling you to be his tongue? Are we going around um, telling people the good news of Christ, that one day everything will be made perfect again, that there's light at the end of the tunnel, to use a rather cliched phrase, to tell people not to give up, to tell people that they're wonderful sons and daughters of, Christ, of, of God, or are you called to be the feet of Christ, to go and help people in need, perhaps to, I know some of us in this church go around offering, uh, driving around giving food to people who need it, using our feet to go and help people in more practical ways. God has called all of us to work for his kingdom. And wherever you are, however old or young you are, whatever your background, whatever your language, God has called you. He has called you like he called Nathaniel and Philip and Samuel. Just listen for his voice. Spend some time in the stillness of God and try and discern what God has called you to do in this kingdom. So whatever it is will be just right for you and it will give you joy and peace. So bless you brothers and sisters. I pray that God will speak to you and give you a sense of the job and the vocation he has in store for you. And it's very exciting and very joyful. Amen. And now, let us say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He became incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now please um, sit and um, as we bring our intercessions to our Heavenly Father. Everlasting God, you chose people to send forth as workers into your vineyard. The word that you trusted to us as stewards. You spoke to awaken Samuel with your call. And so we ask you to open the ears of your chosen ones. Hear us now as we pray for the church and the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, you call Abraham to be the father of many nations. And so we pray for our queen and the nations of our world and their leaders. We continue to pray for peace in your world and especially for those involved in the process of reconciliation and bridge building between peoples, cultures, or nations. Hear us whenever and whenever we can in our everyday lives, to be instrument of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, you call Moses to be the shepherd who led the Israelites from Egypt. Help us all to be worthy pastors of your flock here in our church. We pray for our families, our friends, and our neighbors and all who are part of our pastoral care, both here in St. George, Freezy Water, and in the rest of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the frontliners caring for, protecting, and serving our communities, our friends, and us. Thank you for these servant leaders Call to this work, train for such a time as this daily, risking their own health and safety for others. Please protect them from harm. Give them courage and strength. Draw close, Lord, and let them feel your presence throughout the long hours they are working. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, you called the apostles to be the ambassadors for Christ and gave them the power to heal. Help us to bring healing by our care and our prayers that we may strengthen the spirit of those we love, especially at this time when the pandemic is still so infectious and so many are affected, both in body and in spirit. We especially pray for Heather Anderson, Pauline Sturtis, Susie Antonio, Lona English, Sagi Tusun, Father Brian McMahon, Bob Wallace, Janet Greenwood, Ian Francis, Arandari, Baby Iwu, Naomi, Luke Sheenan, Diana Jones, Angela Bell, Cindy Hart, Angela Fairclough, Catherine Poole, Arthur James, Helen Clark, Bill Bird, Bryant, John Tucker, Claudia Bonner, Barbara Baker, Michael Sheen, Anne Bland, Jim Wallace, Ade Asiwaju, the Constantino family, Robert Gerson, Ruby Bensey, 
and Peter Thundike. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, your son Jesus Christ, wept at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Be with us in our mornings as we pray for all who are coming to the end of their journey here on earth and for all those who have died and now rejoice in the fullness of eternal life. We especially pray for those recently departed, Maureen Pickwood, Lisa Wischusen, Matt Pickering, Fubara Salema, and the Holy, Dave Collins, Teresa Bookshell, Glenfield, Cindy Pereira, and Jean Bootsell. And for those anniversary I call this week, we pray for Maud Brez, Arthur Jacob, Richard Norris, Walter Hennes, sorry, Walter Haynes, Laura Baker, Harry Chapman, Gladys Gould, Francis Robinson, Mary Radley, Helda Plant, George Blasey, Stanley York, Dorothy Woolbos, Ethel Ward, Baby Wicks, Joyce Lacey, Frederick Cooney, Ronan Drake, Doris Sherwell, Shelville, Albert Lewis, Walter Jordan, Iris Blasey, Brian Pepper, Hannah Peace, John Pilgrim, John Smith, Alex Sussman, Emma Lennell, John Cato, William Hassler, and Ennis Dagley. Rest in turn or grant unto them, O Lord. The light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we rejoice in the call to belong to the church, to believe in the gospel, and to be united with the successors of your apostles. Send us out into the coming week, ready to demonstrate our calling in all that we do and say. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to us, to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing a joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, of the Apostles, of the Martyrs, of St. George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Have a lovely day, everybody. Um, I don't know if there's any notices, Father, um, or Irene or David. Um, I had... <laughs> My, my mask is still dangling here. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I had a, a brief conversation before uh, the mass begins um, with Dave Jenner and Anair and Salima um, regarding um, our rotation, our rota for the intercessions and, and the readings. Um, they are um, the two different ways of um, um, participating. In. Um, if you could come to the church and then um, I cannot actually show you the, because if this is off the frame but Irene Salim is sitting here in this corner and Dave Jenner now sitting there so there is no one apart from them so um, feel free to um, to come to the church to join um, in the service not as a member of congregation because we are not doing um, you know the public service but as a part of this you know the altar party so um, you still can come to the church to read and, and to lead the intercessions but if you whatever the reason if we you can't make it there is alternative ways we still don't know how we're going to do that we haven't tried it yet but um, there is another way, um, you know, it's possible. That means um, that we actually record your voice if you are to read, um, you know, scripture reading on a particular Sunday, but you want to do it, but you can't come to the church. In that case, we are going to record your um, the voice and then um, we're going to play it rather than um, being read. So... Um, Still, um, you know, there are possibilities, but we fully understand there are so many people uh, who wanted to, um, to join in, but um, with whatever reason you can't, that's absolutely fine. But when we approach, you know, um, your church wardens will approach you, and then if you can actually um, participate in, in any ways, please um, to let them know so that we can invite you and we can include as many people as possible. So that's all I need to say. The public worship is ceased, but um, I think I'm the Bishop of Edmonton, Bishop of Edmonton and an Archdeacon of Hempstead. Um, you know, it, it, they are trying to hold um, a weekly um, the night prayer, which will be on Monday. It's at 9.30, isn't it? Um, it's, it's a 9.30 p.m. on Monday. It's a weekly thing. And I think that is opened. The invitation is gone to everybody who is worshipping in the Edmonton area. Um, and if I know some more details, I will um, the share that um, probably that will be held um, over the Zoom. So um, once I got the, um, um, the link, um, then um, I will share that link um, over our Facebook page. So I would um, encourage all of you um, to, um, to go and then join that night prayer as a sign of um, you know, mutual support and encouragement. We might need to, um, Dave and, and um, church wardens here, so we might need to actually encourage people to join, join that um, the night prayer. And, and that might be a good idea. We'll, we'll actually have a, have a word um, after Mass. So um, thank you. That, that's all from thank me. Thank you, Father. Okay, let's stand for the final blessing if you are part of the altar party. And... Uh... The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.